So, Bebop, thanks for joining um, me today. Uh, how are you doing? Fantastic. A bit tired. I just came back from Dubai and uh, I stopped by San Francisco. There was a very interesting meeting. I cannot disclose anything, unfortunately, but um, yeah. there's an exciting time worldwide for us. And, you know, I have to thank you for what you're doing because I think the movement needs, you know, a voice and what you're doing it's uh yeah amazing thank trying, you trying to bring the the conversations that would happen normally in the pod right behind you uh right <laughs> to the right. to the broader community um I, unfortunately i cannot show you anything because it's top secret so i'm not gonna <laughs> go and and show anything That's because <laughs> it's it's completely top secret you can't actually see anything because you know <laughs> especially you know the, the, the secret stuff all the the things that we are doing, you know, in, in levitation, propulsion, we will be a big reveal, um, uh -huh. especially to explain to the world how we are building things. Mm -hmm. um, these babies, for example, I cannot show it. Uh -huh. You know, these are pumps, but uh -huh. I, I can't tell you anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna, you know, I can't. Well, you understand then. We'll have to schedule another interview again in the future. Right, <laughs> when you right, can. right. <laughs> um, no, uh, thanks again for making some time in your busy schedule. Um, basically, I, I, I normally ask three questions of, of people that are connected um, in this big project. Okay. Um, and first one is, uh, what, what cities would you like to be connected? Um, if you could connect any two cities or any, anywhere on the world. So let's say my first choice will be probably Los Angeles, San Francisco. And the reason is very simple. It's in everybody's imagination. The reason why we are building up the first full scale um, mm -hmm. track uh, mm -hmm. along the five is for that reason. We choose that uh, county, not only because they are um, donating us $20 million in land, that is not you know, something that you can just turn off. But we have um, several offers, mm -hmm. 11 offers like this Whoa. all over America. Whoa. But that track was, uh, that, that route was particularly interesting because I think it means a lot for a lot of people. That's the mm -hmm. first um, track Elon was foreseeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also a, a, a pity that uh, all the money that is going to be spent for the high speed rail system yes. will be spent out of the pocket of the American people. Mm -hmm. And we, have, we know that we have a better solution. We, we find a technology, we test it, and now we are, we are starting to build it. And it's a pity to see that there's another world that, that still thinks in like a, like a dinosaur and continue to throw um, money out of the windows. Mm -hmm. And this is really sad, not only because, you know, they're throwing money of us, but um, they're also missing an opportunity to invest in education, in, in new way um, of transporting people and in, in, in better ways, because mm -hmm. Hyperloop is not only fast, is is efficient. And yeah. that's what we're trying to say. Our Hyperloop mm -hmm. is a combination, a genius combination of renewable energy they allow you to to be energy positive and we have the best minds in the planet that did the calculation and also the test that we did it's mm -hmm. better than we thought okay Whoa. so i can't disclose anything right now but it's it's really exciting what we are getting and Whoa. i think humanity needs this mm, true i mean there's there's a lot of reasons and um Basically, um, another you kind of answered the other two questions I've had is, you know, why would you choose to ride in one today? Um, and the other question is, you know, how will this change your routines in the future? Um, but is well, there anything else to add about those? Well, yes. I mean, um, what we are doing, we are developing a system that is um, amazingly efficient, okay, as I told you. But it, there are several other aspects that we are taking in consideration. For example, you know, being able to not disrupt the land um, mm -hmm. by building it on pylon allow you to have an amazing um, 
way to also engage the owners of the land because you're not going there anymore saying you know oh we just take out your land or we bifurcate your yeah. territory and then to access to the other side you just do five miles who oh. gives a shit right yeah. no it's yeah. a it's a very efficient way to build and also we are looking with different companies in the world, like, you know, Fraunhofer Institute in Germany or mm. MIT or several companies that develop amazing stuff, like, mm. you know, how to, to collect dew from the air and transform it into water. Mm. Why, why we are doing this? Because we are EP? <laughs> no. Because it's so important now to, to think about um, transportation in an holistic way, we should start to think, how do we impact the land? Is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. What are the, the repercussions of the animals that are living in the ecosystem there? Mm -hmm. So we started to embed these concepts into our design. And this is so important because we can't continue to build that shit <laughs> that you see outside. Yeah. The transportation is broken as we, we mm -hmm. consider it, right? Mm -hmm. So... In, it's our responsibility by embracing this new amazing uh, way to move people to also consider all these other aspects. And mm -hmm. the unique thing about hyperloop transportation technology is that is the a collection of the brightest man, mind in the planet. Mm -hmm. We have 520 scientists from wow. 42 countries, mm -hmm. and uh, they are just pushing in ideas. And I'm not saying we are we solved all problems of humanity. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm no. just saying we need to start thinking about these things. And if there is a way to embed it, so let's do it because mm -hmm. it's important for our children and you know for whatever is the legacy that we will be leaving in this planet. Mm -hmm. Certainly a lot more sustainable. <laughs> Uh, like and it's also uh, profitable because profitable. when you go, yeah, because when you go to a, a, a landowner and you start to say, mm -hmm. you know what, you're in business with me. I will give you electricity. I will give you bandwidth, water. Interesting. You know, Interesting. that's a business model. Hmm. We no. are dreaming, you know, I don't know what, you know, I know what these other companies are doing, but hmm. we see the world in a completely different way hmm. because, you know, there's a very scary research that Harvard did uh, on our price model, for example, okay? Mm -hmm. So it says that from $70 to 130 the ticket price between Los Angeles and San Francisco will not diminish demand. Mm -hmm. So it means that it's up to us to establish a price between 70 and 130 mm -hmm. and we will still take 70% of the flight industry off the plane, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you are us, okay, in this traditional way, you just say, oh, yeah, just let's do just fuck tons of billions of dollars and just fuck everybody else. It's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is that if you have a, a healthy company and you can create a model that maybe is, you know, still generating money and it's mm -hmm. a, an enormous amount of money. I mean, when you are dealing with this kind of project, you're dealing with billions of dollars. So oh. what, what else do you want to have? I mean, you know, hmm. how many cars can you buy or how many things, you know? Hmm. We need to reconsider completely how we create companies. And we are trying to hmm. make this a, a system that will allow people to travel for free. Hmm. And not because we are EP, but because it will make a lot of money anyway. Well, well. You understand what I mean? That's a, that's a huge um, shift <laughs> in, well, in mind. We're, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. So the other companies, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's really enlightening. And how can the average person out there that will want to ride on the Hyperloop, how can we support you and Hyperloop transportation technologies? Well, first, you're already doing it. Second oh. is education. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we need to start uh, speaking about the real um, issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of misconception, a lot of journalists that just talk out of their, can I say ass in internet? Yeah, yep. they can yep. talk out of their ass, right? <laughs> so yep. they just write 
push it like you know oh right. it would be too expensive or it's not doable right. we don't have the technology to do that oh yeah of course they just they just don't even know and they haven't done any real investigation on this hmm. because it's very easy to see that we have an hyperloop already built since 15 years it's called cern <laughs> and it's there to see it's 70 kilometers wide it's you know 12 feet of diameter exactly like us and they are at 10 minus 10 pascal for <laughs> our uh, uh, pressure it's a joke for them <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. right yeah. we are 10 minus 3 maximum okay <laughs> And they, we are talking about something that is there since 15 years, never had a leak. Hmm. It's perfectly functional. He's discovering all kind of new science, you know, oh. the, from the boson to, you know, yeah. God's particle and so on, what yeah. you we are seeing every day. So hmm. why they are talking like this just, just to make an headline? I think they're doing a very bad, um, bad service to humanity. And hmm. we need to start... Create a movement that basically starts to, to talk about the real thing and the real opportunity. And the third thing that you, you can do is mm -hmm. basically, you know, if you, whoever is looking at this video and is a passionate person, professional, mm -hmm. uh, you can be an engineer, an architect, a, um, an artist. We, are, we have also no. a, a video and audio team that is working on amazing stuff. We'll come out with some real cool cool stuff awesome. Awesome. and awesome. and we are creating it's not a company anymore it's a movement mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. i i was just saying about the other company that you know they should choose another name because it's very confusing i mean how can you possibly think to incorporate your company after a year and a half that you have another company with the same name <laughs> It's not even legal, but I'm not, you know, we're not, I think we preach radical inclusion. Yeah. So yeah. as much as I can, I will try to just persuade them to change the name and it will be the, the most, you know, logic thing to do. Yeah. But anyway, except this, I think, you know, we are creating a, a magic movement all together, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And uh, we are all perceiving the same thing. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. I guess all all ships rise with the the tide. <laughs> it's, yes, it's just gonna, yes. it's going to be a cool movement. Yes. Well, thank but you. But people so, like yeah. you and your age understand mm. this. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm exactly your age. You're right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. no, I'm not I'm old. <laughs> but so. but yeah. older people like like me for example doesn't really we created a, a fucked up society we will we should change it hmm. well i'm trying yeah, exactly <laughs> i'm trying with one interview exactly. at a time <laughs> one right. hyperloop conversation at a time one interview at a time and yeah. i'm so lucky to be able to manage my company by traveling mm. because this new way of of you know being collaborative uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's so different. Yeah. 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 Um, well, thank you so much, Bebop. Uh, I, I, I look forward to following HTT in the future, and it's just going to be awesome. Thank you for doing this, okay? Right. Whatever.